Welcome to VEX 105. In this part, we'll be taking a look at some basic maths functions, the modulus operation, as well as some comparisons such as bigger than, less than, not equals to, and how these can work in if statements. Let's get our VEX on. Let's take a look at some basic mathematical functions. Now I'm going to shake things up and use a box. So we've got a box here, but I need a few more points, so I'm just going to subdivide it. Let's take a look at that. Oh, look, a sphere. Right, let's grab a rectangle. And we're going to run over detail for this. And let's take a look at the geometry spreadsheet. Let's create ourselves two integers, a and b. So a is going to be 8 and b is going to be 3. So our first function is add. And that's just adding the two numbers together. So 8a plus b. Now I'm going to save these as float attributes, which will become a bit apparent later on. The next one we've got is subtraction. So a minus b. You can see here that 8 minus 3 is indeed 5. We've got multiplication, so A, and then we use the star sign for that, B. So that's 8 times 3, which is 24. And then finally, we've got division. So divide equals A divided by B. Now, as you can see, this gives us an output of 2. But we know that 8 divided by 3 should be something like 2.666. So why does it give us an output of 2? Well, that's because we're putting two integers into the division. So it believes we want an integer output back. But if we want a float output back, if we want that decimal place, we can go ahead and we can say, oh, let's create that as an attribute, because we can use the float function. So float, and let's just put a inside that, and that's saying convert a to a float. So in this case, it's taking 8 and converting it to 8.0. Let's divide that by B. Oh, semicolon. And we now get 2.666. So with division, we just need to be sure that if we want a float out, we need to make sure that at least one of them is a float. But if they're both integers, it's going to give us an integer back. Let's take a look at power. So F underscore power equals power. A, B. And this says A to the power of B. So 8 to the power of 3. So that's 8 times 8 times 8, which gives us 5 or 2. Let's do it the other way around. So G power equals power B, A. And in this case, it's 3 to the power of 8. So it's 3 times 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 3. Times three. So that's what power does. It powers the first number to the power of the second number. Let's take a look at a modulus function. Now I'm going to run over points for this as it's a better demonstration. So let's say i at a equals pt num. And for modulus, we use the percentage sign. So percentage sign, you'll often hear it called mod. So PT num mod 2. And let's take a look at that. So this gives us the remainder once a number is divided by the second number. So this gives us the remainder once PT num is divided by 2. So you can see here when 10 is divided by 2, we get no remainder. But when 11 is divided by 2, we get a remainder of 1. So let's do B. Let's go at PT mum mod 5. So this is going to give us the remainder once PT mum is divided by 5. As you can see here, 16 divided by 5 gives us a remainder of 1, 17 gives us a remainder of 2, and so on. So this is the way we can split things up. So if I wanted to say take every fifth one, I could say, oh look, when it equals 0. So when b is equal to 0, I could do something. 
So that's how we can use mod to split things up. And we'll go into using that to drive other functions or decide certain parameters later on. So we've got our basic mathematical functions. We've got modulus. And finally, let's take a look at some rounding stuff. So for a new angle. And let's just say R. And let's call it a random number. And I'm just going to fit it between negative 10 and 10, just so we've got some stuff going on. There we go. So we have an R value, and it's fitted between negative 10 and 10. So let's create A. And let's have a look at, first of all, floor. So let's floor at R. So what does floor do? Well, it rounds it down to the nearest number. As you can see here, 6.2 gets rounded down to 6. Negative 6.2 gets rounded down to negative 7. 0.39 gets rounded down to 0. And the other one of that is seal. And this rounds up. As you can see how 6.2 gets rounded up to 7. Negative 9.955 gets rounded up to negative 9. So we've got floor and sill, and they all round decimal places up or down, depending on which one you use. The best way I like to think about it is think of a room. Your floor is below you, and your ceiling is above you. So whatever your number is, if you floor it, you go down. If you seal it, you go up. So those are some basic functions. We've covered the maths, we've covered the modulus, and we've covered the floor and the seal. Let's take a look at the if statement and some comparisons. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle. Let's plug that in. And let's take a look. So how does the if statement work? Well, we start off with if, and we say, compare this. Whatever happens inside here, it's going to compare it. We then use an open squiggly bracket, and we end it with a closed squiggly bracket. And we say, if compare this, do this if true. So if this is true, we do this. And we can leave it like that. That can be our if statement, and that's a perfectly valid if statement. We could also add an else to the end. And we can say, do this if false. So compare this, do it if true, else do this if it's false. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons to see how we can make this work. So the first thing we're going to do is going to say if, and let's use our modulus that we used previously. So if mod ptnum mod 3, I want to say if it's equal to, so we use a double equal sign, and that says equal to, so 0. If ptnum mod 3 is equal to 0, I want the cd to be red. Else, oh, squiggly bracket, I want it to be black. I just realized I forgot the at symbol up here. There we go. So if ptnum mod 3 is equal to 0, red, else black. So let's take a look at our spreadsheet. So we can see 0, we can see 3, and 6, and 9 are all red, and anything else is black. So let's make a note of that. Equals 2. So two equal signs is equal to. How do we say not equal to? Well, it's exclamation mark equal sign. So that says if PT num mod three is not equal to zero, give me red, else give me black. So not equals two. And let's take a look at that. And you can see here that one and two, they're not equal to zero when they're modded three, so they give me red, 
else zero, three, six, all give me black. Let's take a look at some comparisons. I have 300 odd points, so let's use 150 as my sample. So if PT num is bigger than 150, give me red, else give me black. So bigger than. And you can see here that if we look at the arrow, it's bigger on the left hand side than it is on the right hand side. So that arrow there, this side, this side here, is bigger than this side here. So let's take a look. So we'll see here, when we get to number 150, 151 is bigger than 150. So that's red and 150 and less are black. And that's because we're saying is bigger than. We can say smaller than, and that's the other arrow. So that's that way around. If PT num is smaller than 150, give me red, else give me black. And you can see here, 149 is smaller than, so we've got red, but 150 and more is black. But what if we wanted to include 150? Well, we can use an equal sign. So less than equals. So that's saying it's less than or equals to 150. So you can see how 150 now got included. And again, we can go bigger than. So bigger than or 150 is red. So bigger and or smaller and 150. So those are four main types of comparisons, equals, non-equals, bigger than, smaller than. We can now also do multiple comparisons inside our if statement. So we're saying if ptnum is bigger than or equals to 150, and I want to say and something else. And in that case, I use two ampersands. So, and. So this is and. So if ptnum is bigger than or equals to 150, and ptnum mod 2 is equal to 0. Let's have a look at that. So, if it's bigger than or equals to 150, so anything less than 150 is black. No matter what, it's black. If ptnum mod 2 is equal to 1, no matter what, it's black. Only when both of these are true, so both ptnum being more than 150 and ptnum mod 2 is equal to 0, will we get the true statement. What if we want an OR? That is this vertical line here. That is an OR. So if I put this and do double vertical line, that says now if ptnum is bigger than 150 or ptnum mod 2 is 0, then it's true. So you can see here now how most of our sphere is red because anything bigger than 150 or mod 2 we get the true statement. So those are our comparisons. Equals, non-equals, bigger than, smaller than, and, or. And we can obviously use a combination of them together to give us this. Let's take a final quick look at extending our if statements. So let's drop down another wrangle. Plug that in here. And let's take a look at this. So if at ptnum mod 3 is equal to 0, let's make our color red. And let's add an else. But this time I'm going to add another if statement afterwards. So else if at ptnum mod 3 is equal to 1, let's make it green. And then finally, else 
quickly brackets at cd equals blue. So let's take a look. So if pt num mod 3 is equal to 0, do this and ignore everything else in that else. If pt num mod 3 is not equal to 0, we then do this if statement, which is if pt num mod 3 is equal to 1. Let's give it this, else we give it that. But if this is false and this is false, we end up here giving it blue. So we can combine all these together. We can add more. So we could say if at pt num is greater than 100, do this, else, let's just give it black. And you can see here we've now got some black points. So we can combine as many if statements as we want, as many else statements, continuing down. But obviously the more you add, the more complexity it's going to be. And when you start getting to something like this, there's probably going to be a better way to do it rather than if, else if, else if, else if. You'll probably find a better way to work this out. But let's just delete that for the moment. And let's go back to this one. So we've got if pt num mod 3 is equal to 0. And let's add that. And pt num for me, I want it to be less than 100. So you can see I've suddenly got a lot more points coming blue because pt num now has to be less than 100 and mod 3 before it gives it red. So you can see we've not got too many red points there. Else if pt num mod 3 is equal to 1 or at pt num is bigger than 200. And you see we suddenly get a lot more green. So we can combine stuff in here together. So I could say that pt num mod 3 is equal to 0 and pt num is less than 100. And at pt num mod 5 is equal to 0. And you can see we suddenly lose quite a lot of our reds there. And that's because pt num has to be mod 3 of 0, mod 5 of 0, and less than 100. Which in our case, if we take a look at the r value and sort via r, that only gives us not many points at all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It only gives us 7 points where this is all true. So we can combine them all together. But that's how we can extend our if statement and our else statement to include more ifs and make a chain of else if. In this part, we took a look at some of the basic mass functions, the modulus operation, and some comparisons and how they're used inside if and else statements. I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.